Hey everyone, welcome to this Azure infrastructure update and this is the end of March 2020. Um, two weeks ago I posted the mid-March update. And as always my goal is to try and do this bi-monthly and if you post a particularly cool comment or give me a great idea, I'll send you one of these on board to Azure with John Savile challenge coins. So let's get to it. So firstly something that's actually going away. So for Azure AD B2B, business to business, unmanaged viral tenants are being retired. So essentially there'll be no new unmanaged tenant after March 31st, 2021, so next year. Uh, if you're not familiar, if we think about, I have my Azure AD, and I have my SharePoint and Azure and SaaS apps connected to my Azure AD, so I have all these different kind of resources, what I can do is I can invite guests. So those guests might be from another Azure AD, they might be a Microsoft account, they could be a Gmail account, they could be someone I federated with, with SAML or WS Fed. But if they weren't any of those things, traditionally what happened is, if I connected with my x.com, behind the scenes, Azure would create this kind of unmanaged, this viral AAD instance, and it would create whatever account I used within that unmanaged instance. There was no uh, global administrator of that. Now, if I was the company that owned that, I could go ahead and make it manage. There was a process, but it was very untidy. If this user left that company, I wouldn't know. They would still have access and connect to those resources. So a better option is this capability to do a one-time passcode. So if I turn on the one-time passcode from my tenant, what I can now do is instead of this viable tenant being created that just isn't used anymore, it will send me this one-time passcode I type that in and I log on to essentially my Azure AD. They were guests to my Azure AD. If they'd left that company, they'd lose access to that mailbox, they wouldn't get the one-time passcode anymore. So all good things. So now make sure you go and turn on one-time passcode because this time next year, there'll be no unmanaged, no viral tenants anymore. So make sure you enable that OTP. Azure Security Center. So now it's actually integrated with Windows Admin Center even more. So I can actually onboard operating system instances in a hybrid environment, it could be on-premises, wherever. So now there's an extension for the Azure Security Center in Windows Admin Center. If you're not using Windows Admin Center, you should be. I can install it on a server and access that as a gateway for many machines. There's no agent deployed to the servers I manage. It's all just using kind of the native WS MAN technologies. I have a huge breadth of functionality available to me. I can manage storage spaces direct and clusters and Hyper-V. I can get PowerShell and manage disks, huge amounts of things. It's really integrated with Azure, Azure Monitor, Azure Backup, Azure Site Recovery, uh, Azure Automation, Azure Monitoring. Now Azure Security Center. So through this extension, now in Windows Admin Center, I can onboard my machines into Security Center, and then through Windows Admin Center, I'll see my security alerts and my recommendations. So definitely want to do this. Identity and access recommendations are now available in the free tier of Azure Security Center. So I'll be told things like, hey, um, I should have MFA enabled on these accounts. Uh, I shouldn't have more than three owners. Those sorts of things will now surface. Azure Container Registry will now be scanned. So this will actually go and check those images I upload to my Azure Container Registry and check for any vulnerabilities and surface those to me. Likewise now, the Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS, has protection. This will go through and look for kind of threat protection. It will detect any instances that are added to my subscription and go and do checks on those. It would also give various security recommendations. The Azure Cloud Shell. So I now have additional storage regions available for my Azure Cloud Shell. Now these will be secondary regions. The compute, 
So that container that actually runs my cloud shell will still be in one of the primary regions. However, now the data at rest, maybe I'm storing profiles or data, that Azure file share, well that will now go to whatever that chosen secondary region is. So if I have certain compliance requirements about where data is stored, I can now do that. Now, obviously, if this storage is in a secondary region, i.e. not the same place as the compute, it may start up a little bit slower. I may see a small performance uh, degradation. But if that helps me meet compliance regulations, fantastic. Uh, kind of all in favor of that. For Azure Networking, NAT Gateway is now GA. Now I did a whole separate video on this. If you're interested, uh, you can kind of go and take a look at that link. This is about creating a discrete service. Uh, it can live with things like standard load balancer. But now I can control the IPs that are used to go and get to internet resources. I can control um, availability zones, where it's zonal, where it's pinned to a certain zone. Just gives me full control of that outbound NAT experience. Azure Storage, an Azure SQL database of now GA for private link, the ability to have an endpoint for those services projected into my virtual network, and I can then access the service via that IP within my virtual network. Don't have to have a public endpoint. I can then use that endpoint even from connected networks. So if I had ExpressRail or site-to-site -site VPN, I can now get to my storage account or my Azure SQL database through that IP in my virtual network. No public endpoint has to be there. Azure Data Explorer, I can now deploy clusters into my own custom virtual network. So Azure Data Explorer is this very fast, very scalable uh, analytics service. The idea is I have these huge volumes of data coming in, could be logs, could be telemetry data, and it can process that and give me insights into the data. So now I can actually deploy that into my own virtual network. Again, this is all about a lot of these things about, hey, I don't want these public facing services. I want to bring it into my virtual network and really lock down that access. So now with this, in my virtual network, my network security groups, um, they're going to be leveraged. Anything connecting to my virtual network, again, that express route, that site to site will be able to get to this service. Azure Front Door. Remember, Azure Front Door is all about the idea that, hey, I have some services, could be in Azure, could be outside Azure, they have these kind of public IPs. And what Front Door does, different from Traffic Manager, Traffic Manager is DNS based, I resolve the name to a possible entry, but then the client talks to it directly. With Azure Front Door, I can think about there's lots of points of presence all around the world that kind of Azure has. These are all connected kind of to this Azure backbone, which then connects to all these different regions and other sources around the world. So now I'm a client, with front door, what it actually does for HTTP and HTTPS only, um, ordinarily, I have to go and establish a session to the back end. So there's a TCP session all that way, uh, a TLS, SSL all that way, I get a little bit of traffic, back, a little bit of traffic back. So with front door member, that TCP establishment is to that person, that point of presence right close to me. That SSL communication is right close to me. I go and request a bit of data, it goes on the Azure backbone, gets a whole big chunk of data, and then gives it to me little pieces at a time as I request it. Um, it will also now cache that, so if someone else comes along and wants that, it can use it and serve it to them. Because it does terminate the connection here, I can do cool things like SSL offload. Um, so there's a lot of things I can do with this Azure front door technology. And so what it now does is support things like wildcard host domains. So I can have star dot something. I have a configurable idle timeout. So how long is it going to wait for those initial packets before it actually stops? Configurable minimal TLS versions. So if maybe from a compliance requirement, I need a minimum version of TLS, I can now configure that on my Azure front door. My health probe configuration. So ordinarily the probe will do a get. 
well, there's a certain amount of bandwidth, there's a certain amount of charge that I will incur because of that get. So now instead of a get, I can do a head request. That's smaller, less bandwidth, less money. If I only have one on the back end, well, I can skip the health probe altogether. I can do lockdowns. So there's this new um, kind of Azure front door ID that can be sent in the header that I can use for the actual lockdown of the communication. And I can disable back end certificate name checks if I want to. So again, additional capabilities for front door. On Azure Storage, Blob Immutability is now GA. So this is all about the idea of write once, read many, worm. So when I turn this on, there's different types of policy. But I can add new blobs, I can read blobs, I can't change an existing blob, I can't delete a blob. When I put one of these locks on, I can't delete the container, I can't delete the storage account. It's all about really locking that down. And what I want to do with this is I can do like a time-based lock to say, hey, this is just going to lock for 30 days. And until that time, once I've turned that time lock on, there's nothing I can do. Or I can do a legal hold. With legal hold, I add tags for maybe case IDs. And only once all the cases have been removed is that lock released. We have Azure dedicated hosts. This is where I basically get a box of a certain SKU, and I can put as many VMs of that series on that box, but it's dedicated to me. No other customer is using that box. Um, I can have multiple hosts and put them in a host group. I can do things like pin to availability zones. These are dedicated to me, and there are new hardware types available. So these support basically a broader range of workloads. Now, based on the type of hardware, the dedicated host I buy, controls the types of VMs. So there's now a DAS v4, that's general purpose, I can run D series on those. There's memory optimized, EAS v4 and MS v2. And there's storage intensive, LS v2. And all of these are AMD Epic, except for that M series over there. So I have these new SKUs, uh, so I can do new types of deployments on them. Again, I get the whole box, and I can cram as many VMs as fits, depending on the size of the box I buy. And there's different sizes based on those dedicated host SKUs. So that was the end of our update. Um, I hope that was useful. Um, please give this video a like. Please subscribe so you see these notifications. I do have kind of the weekly update where I just send very detailed about all of the Azure services and um, any free Microsoft events. You can just go to savletech.com and hit the subscribe button there. And follow me on Twitter at NTFatGuy. But until uh, two weeks' time, uh, crazy out there. Um, please take care of yourselves. I'm actually recording from a new space. I moved from my pool room um, down to this room downstairs, now my little studio. Still experimenting. Um, but yeah, kind of fun. But yes, uh, take care of yourselves. See you in two weeks' time.